day to go to Mission Critical Technologies. to understand where everything is at this exhibition. It's all arranged by the color of the carpet. It, it looks yellow, but it's a red carpet. Let's start the day. For Nokia, network slicing is very important. Uh, but I have, do have some questions about network slicing. How secure is it? How easy is it to slice networks? And what are the challenges when we talk about network slicing? Jane is around here. Jane Regard. Hi. Hi Jane, good to see you. Good to see you. We're at the Nokia booth here. Yes. You have um, you have a big booth actually, divided yes. by a pathway, and, which and means the 5G uh, highway, right? Yes, yes, but with a pedestrian crossing to make sure we also consider the safety of it, right? The safety is it's just over there, right? <laughs> okay, that's cool. Jane, um, you talked about network slicing yes. uh, previously, and uh, but I do have some questions, because you just cannot slice a network and where you have a section that is for public safety and good luck with it. There are some challenges with that, right? So, so what we need to consider, of course, from a, from a 5G perspective is that, that when we talk about slicing, it's not just a matter of saying we within one physical network can put on uh, QoS for one thing. Slicing is truly service level agreements end to end, which means across, it goes across all silos radio, core, transport, applications on top. So we need to consider service level agreements and we need to consider security. And, and one of the aspects of slicing is that we need to be able to orchestrate this. So actually what we have... Uh, we have something let, over let there, let yeah? Me okay, me. good. So, so the, the idea is that with slicing that we are able to spin up parts of a network with a certain service level agreement um, very quickly. So in this case, uh, you can see we, we have a we have a network that might be catering for automatic driving. We might have entertainment in the back seat uh, for the kids. All of it on the same physical network, but we allocate a resource within that physical network for certain service level agreements. Now something happens, and I need to have extra capacity, or I need to have a public safety slice. Well, then I'm able to spin that up, and actually being able to allocate the whole um, network resources in a specific area with priority but because I'm I'm doing it end to end I'm also catering I have it I have the agility within the network to do it but I need to do that with the right orchestration that happens real time low latency I need to be able to do it with the right SLA and security all the it's way a proper planning of course you know when, when, is, when the network when that network needs extra capacity straight away yes you need to make sure you, you can need to deliver it straight away and you need to be able to basically press the button and spin it up within seconds yeah and and that of course is a challenge from a technology point of view but it's also challenging from a process point of view because I need to then make sure that I do that and I basically create a logical network within system network. So we're not there yet, it's things we're working on, but it's definitely one of the places where critical communications in general do a benefit from 5G because we are able to have these logical networks within a physical network and, and take them up and bring them down or expanding them as we go. Okay, now the thing. Long implementation times. See that facial recognition. Because it's really what you do with that capture data. Focusing on the transition. You can get the sensing back to your fingers. Exactly. It's, you know, try me, trying to make the operator sense. more efficient. We're going to deliver things, you know, in steps. So question how much interest is there really from the end users from a 5G point of view so I would say we talk about it yes. but I, I, I haven't so, talked to the customer yet no. so, so, you, so you I know. would say that there's there's two things um, if you look 5G overall to begin with there's a lot of talk about extra you know more broadband we want to be enhancing extra capacity higher speeds uh, but but the push for what I would say more is critical communication okay, so lower latency ultra reliability from a from a today's point of view, it might be technology-wise coming a little bit later, but the interest of what there is, we see people in the uh, industrial automation. We see people. We're doing actually a five G slicing with the port of Hamburg, who's doing it for running the port of Hamburg already. Yes. So of course this is this is concept and saying how can we get it to work, but we see that there is in the industries in the 
what from a telecom perspective we often call verticals, right? Mm -hmm. The people around us, the people who use the networks, that there is a long, a very strong interest to in saying, but how does this going to work for me? Because that will give me benefits, maybe not today, but two years, three years, four years down the line, and I need to move already around my processes. So if you go and ask the 5G industry, I would say, Yes, it's a little bit of a nice marketing buzzword, whatever, but the real push and the real discussions actually are happening from the industry. We went to Hannover Messe, as an, as an example. Much discussion, and of course that was not within 5G, is this radio, is this core, is this transport, mm -hmm. what there is, but a lot of interest is happening. Mission critical technology is not only about public safety, it's also about industry. Um, Nokia has a good example here about latency and, and feeling what a robot can do, and specifically latency actually, that's very important. Um, Jane, what, what is happening here? Because so that's, it seems to be very techy over here, <laughs> is it? It's yeah, actually, actually what we have, if you can show on this side, so we have an industrial robot. And in this case, we're just showing what it is. So we have a haptic, robot sitting on one side where we we are touching there's a little sensor at the bottom and it can tend, it can it can feel what kind of materials are underneath the idea is that you put in the hands on the robotics right okay, so what he's doing over here yes. he's, he's, so he's he's moving his hands moving, there and of course the and the robot the robot is is hopefully moving on the other side you have sensing parts here and you can sense what the robot robot sends on the other side so wait a minute this is great so you can sense over here what yeah. that robot is feeling. Yes. So, so the point is that if you can touch it, and you get, that means you need to have this maximum six milliseconds latency difference between not only the network, but also the full applications. But if you can do that, and we can do that with 5G latencies, then we are able to get the fact of saying, you could set in a robot in a hazardous area, bombs, you can have um, cleaning up materials you don't want to touch, but you're still going to have the feeling and the sensor of what yeah, Oh, now he's now he's yeah, in, so right? So, he's, so he's, moving. he's moving. And he can feel what he's feeling. If you then, at the same time, he was able to put on VR goggles, he can then see. So you have cameras sitting on there, and that means you basically are able to, to be places where you're not otherwise, and you're able to touch it. And that we can do with the mobility of 5G, and we can do it with the low latency. Can I do this today? No, I still need work to do. But yeah. the thing is that from an industrial point of view, we see this as being a critical communications, industrial automation. Critical but, technology. But it is critical communications that is not only addressable. You know, we talk, exactly. we talk about public safety, so we can definitely address it when it comes into saying, what can I use robotics for going forward? So 5G is much more than just uh, radio and core and boring technology. It's also cool things to use it for. Okay, so the proof is in the pudding. What Jane says, she can tell me everything actually. However, I need to feel, I need to understand exactly what she's talking about. Okay, so this is metal. How do we, do we, we is could, there anything we else? We another surface, yeah. Okay. So, so we'll go to another surface. So I, I keep on, keep yeah, my hand so on this one. Keep your hand on that one and then we'll just go around and we're gonna go and check another surface. So that was metal with bridges inside it. Yeah. I can, I can feel it and with this robot, it, but I also can see it. Okay, go. I need to now need to know where my hand is. Yeah, and then you know you need to hand it, so yeah, it's just roughly about there. Okay, so, oh my god, this is. Oh, you can't see it actually, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's so real that you, you feel like you're looking at it and touching it at the same time because you're very up close to it. I'm trying to understand the applications for public safety actually for this. If this is only the start of 5G, I'm pretty nervous what 6, 7, 8 or 9G will be, but that's another story. <laughs>